Today I have invited a very talented person on my podcast today. He is architect Subin Selva and has been an interior and architectural design photographer since the past 15 years. He found his passion for photography since first year of architecture and let's see his journey from becoming an amateur photographer to a trained professional today. Welcome him on board. Also make sure to subscribe to my channel and never miss another update from us. Please fill up my comment section. and also let me know what other podcasts and guests do you all want on board thank you welcome subin sir okay. and uh, you know thank you for taking out the time to come on our podcast and uh, you know as you know that our target audience are our students and aspiring designers mm-hmm. and we would all like to learn a lot from you uh, your professional interior and architectural design photographer and welcome sir thank you thank you uh, uh sir i so i'll start with the basic hmm. uh, sir aapko ye idea kahan se aaya that you had an interest aside to photography uh, during like I, the entire photography started in my first year of architecture where like we used to go for study trip and during that time i had to keen on capturing images like capturing monuments and structures so while taking capture like while capturing like i had to like i'll wait like let i don't want people in my frame mm. or i want mm. to people in such a way it gives scale to that entire stru- structure and all so usse i started and then i started shooting when he came back and then people started appreciating the image which like in the in the first year of architecture and then slowly started shooting for all the nasa trophies correct and then slowly it built it and then i was continuing doing photography in my fourth year of architecture i did a i google competition hmm. so usme i got shortlisted i was in top 6 which inclined ke okay chal i can do a like hmm. i can do that that that's where your interest lied yes hmm. and then in my fifth year of architecture we started a club known as iws which okay. is a photography club where All i used right. to take my like juniors and my colleagues to like we used to like on every weekends especially sunday mm. we used to go on like different parts of bombay document and photograph and i used to teach them that's how okay. the entire photography journey started uske baad like on the same year 2020 2010 mein then we had a photography exhibition mm. so whoever participate or came for that photography shoot so we created a panel and then exhibited mm. this was your motivation to start photography like because yeah. you were good at it you found See, your niche i was like good like i, I like liked capturing images like capturing moments and all but the main push happened in my fourth year when i got shortlisted mm. for i google let us say like international competition uh, though they invited me to london but that time i didn't have my passport so there's a big <laughs> uh, like problem but theek hai like we tried applying but usa kuch hua nahi from a very amateur photographer you know or self taught photographer as you call it hmm. you became a professional photographer so how did that transition work out for you so after my graduation i was working for one year and then i did a full time photography course from lla so okay. before getting into lla i tried applying at uh, nid so nid was offering a similar photography course but during that time there was no course material available like i approached different classes who used to mm-hmm. train mm-hmm. students for uh, an id exam there was they didn't have any material where i can study okay. so i applied but i didn't get through so the second best option i had is uh, light and life academy it's in uti all right so, so you studied like it from uti it's mm-hmm. a one year full full time course so because you have a design background uh, so people who are interested in photography doing this as a career hmm. is it important to have that design background does it like uh, give you and give you a push uh it does so if you are in like if a trained designer or if you have studied formally like as in terms of design even if it's like architect architecture or if you do interiors the you have been trained to do like see perspective imagine stuff so mm. those things helps in com- like mm. composition like mm. it you can easily like it helps you in framing when you talk about self taught and you know aspiring uh, aspiring designers and aspiring architects who are interested in photography do you have like any advice for them as to what equipment to use uh, is the basic stuff that you need to become an am- photographer see first of all you need to have a good uh, eye i f- to look at stuff mm. like like you, if you don't see right now people might be saying that you need a good camera you need a good tripod but those things are secondary okay. if you have good vision like if you can visualize how to frame stuff then equipment is like you can do you can like if you have an iphone or if you have a dslr camera you can get a similar output 
really yeah yeah so from a phone and from yeah. a camera you can get the similar Easily, output yeah. so the but, people uh, who are interested in photography pehle to unka ki the blockage is that we don't have a camera yeah. so that's not that's, a that's never it's okay. like i i conduct photography classes i like okay. courses for weekend students and everyone so for them also what i do is like even if they have a point and shoot camera mm-hmm. it's too good for me to start because if oh. you have a eye if you know what to click this camera is just a tool mm-hmm. it's capturing what you want to shoot mm-hmm. so i still feel ki like basic even if a point and shoot camera is more than enough to okay so if you get into detail like uh, like a advanced level of photography then you need a good better better like mm. dslr yeah but till you're an amateur you don't yeah need you it. don't need you mm. just just have a like an eye for mm. to capture stuff mm. that's it can you share uh, your insights on how how do you go across say for example you got a project so what is your first thing like considerations just natural lighting ho gaya ya fir koi equipment ho gaya what are your consider- considerations so composition here whenever we go to any site the first thing is we clean up entire site mm. we should like make sure each and every element is properly cleaned there should mm. not be any dust so everything is aligned so its initial setup takes uh, like say maybe 1 1 1/2 hours to set the entire stage mm. you have to like set each and every frame like each and every element what the designer has done it you have to make sure that everything is aligned and check the spacing if the the linen are not properly kept to make sure like you mm. do that you have to check whether the photo frames are properly aligned they're not tilted so those process you have to do it mm. first and then it becomes easy to capture it because everything will be aligned and mm. oh you know i've just heard about this but i'm not very sure ki when you have to give photographs for these magazines and all uh, light is not an element which you all need i think you'll only uh, have to submit natural photographs or something natural light photographs aisa kuch hota hai so th- in this there are two cases like there are two kind of people one people prefer only the daylight okay so you like where there will be no artificial light mm. only like the built form and your light is there mm. Mm. so even when you're saying two like as i said two there is always like artificial is actually replicating the natural light mm. so in this case the light source is fixed you have the entire day to shoot but mm. in case of you are doing shooting in an architectural building from mm. outside mm. so your sun is constantly yes. moving like earth is constantly yes. moving sun not sun like uh, earth is constantly moving so you have to get the lighting right so mm. if you miss that particular frame or particular lighting mm. you technically have to wait the like one more year to get the exact same shadows one more year yeah. to get the so because what happens shadow. today the sun, uh, the earth is at one position the next day it moves oh so my. even in terms of the if you are like that particular if you get the same shadows then you have to wait for a year even in like as i said like photography in are uh, like closer to equator the sun moves faster like mm. it's the shadows are constantly moving mm. so that doesn't happen in the european part like if you're in europe mm. and us you have time so that's why it's like, like even if you say that there's something you know as blue hour means golden hour the so blue hour is like a uh, half an hour or one hour before sunrise and half an hour and post sunset so the entire sky so turns blue so all these considerations you have you to make before to you even start the project yeah, yeah. you need so to like plan so like we have to see like whether the architects want like want the entire image in twilight twilight is like it's not properly lit the sky but the some amount of light is there plus mm. you have a mix of your artificial light or you want entire thing in daylight so either you shoot in the early morning like post mm. sunrise and then somewhere in the like afternoon time where the shadows are properly there uh, so typically uh, so what does a typical day in your life then is because you have to wait for like long hours you have to wait for daylight then you have to wait for the sun to you know come to its angle how mm. how mm. how do you work so then so even like before we start so like the building is there mm. you have to do a reiki like you have to before the like shoot you have to like one week prior or like just prior like prior the shoot you have to go there see where the north is there and as per that you know how the sun will move mm. so you have to plan a day like suppose if a building is east facing building so you have to shoot on the first half of the day mm. second half with the sun will be behind it you won't will never get it mm. so it's the same thing even in, in in terms of interiors you have to see where is it apartment mm. whether it's a east facing or west facing if it's a north facing then you'll have indirect light coming there mm-hmm. so those consideration you'll have to do it and then as per that suppose imagine if it's a east facing uh, structure or a, a, a bungalow then you have to shoot and light like if you're using artificial light everything has to be ready before the sunrise mm. so to just wait for the sunrise to sun come up 
and click oh it that's my. it so because of so you'll have a team to do this like yeah, i mean yeah. i'm sure there are a lot of interior stylists also yeah, on yeah, site yeah. so how does this coordination with so everybody so in that work? case like we have a meeting with the architect mm. me and the uh, stylist will be there and then how like we see how they have done it as per the architect's taste uh, the stylist get the stuff and then they style it Mm. and before also you shoot like once you are frame it we have to move few stuff to make mm. sure that the frame looks good mm mm-hmm. so there also the design comes the major part if the house is well designed you have to do minimal styling or minimal in terms of movement to frame it properly so uh, the people out there who are you know just aspiring photographers or they are you know learning photography i'm sure a uh, photo photographs will have a post processing uh, softwares bhi honge so those skills are also very important uh yeah 50% not even 50 when say 10% so okay. if you get like where from where we are coming like where uh, the school from where we learned like i learned so there uh, the main principle is to tell us ki whatever you want you have to get right on your camera so mm-hmm. there we are not allowed to do any post process so whatever you want so if the like we have to submit our raw images mm. so editing was completely no no so okay. even right now what we do like we'll do everything we'll do the entire staging and one click that's it for that mm. particular frame no touch up like i've see people they take 10 15 so, images so no because i've heard about this yeah. they'll take 10 15 images then they'll edit it and some lighting edits and a lot of things are done so those skills are also very important but then I contrary prefer, you're saying that you know we want that one click yeah. and that's the final like image i prefer doing mm. everything on mm. on site and capture it and that's there. why so, you are very concerned about your lighting yes, your shadows yes, because yes. you don't want to do this Any. later so, like, in editing so like whatever you try to do see like you can do it see it's easier to get everything ready on site mm. so it'll be one click and then you'll be say maximum like 15 20 minutes you'll be spending to make like if any like touch up need to be done to remove perspective correction those things you can do it on camera like post mm. but if you're sitting and making the lighting then you'll be spending like 2 3 hours in one image uh, so it's always better to do a pre uh, setup i prefer that than than to do no but that, that's your yeah. see hence uh, you're a successful photographer yeah, because yeah. that's your style yeah. that you know you do a pre setup yeah. first and then and you then, go yeah. take the best image possible which yeah. requires minimal editing right right correct so like you save time like so you know like what sometimes what happens you say ki ha i can do this i'll do this touch up so mm-hmm. right now in this case that like, one light is not working so you say ki i'll do it in post but sometimes what happens yeah. the light also plays a different role like if mm-hmm. two lights comes in the shadows will be something different than the single light shadows that you can't replicate you can replicate but you have to spend more time mm-hmm. that is not worth mm-hmm. so whatever mm-hmm. is possible you get right on your camera on your first time one mm-hmm. go and then like so like even while while we were studying we like we used to set up like of 3 4 hours mm-hmm. to to get one product done and then mm-hmm. one single clock and then the everything is packed up mm-hmm. i remember like i used to shoot for our product where i spent almost like 14 hours to get the setup right Mm. get the splash right and then less of a post production oh you just mm. spoke about products yeah. so what are the other genres in uh, photography that one can pursue see pro- product photography is like you are shooting a small product yes. mm. but architectural architecture interiors is like you are scaling that thing up mm. so even building is like a product only you have to light like light and make it look good so mm. like So product photography is actually like a main for all the different types of uh, photography. So if you know you have to master that product photography, so then if, if you've done that lighting for a smaller object, it becomes easier to light a bigger bigger. Uh, you see the first three part like the composition, everything like every layman can do that or every, okay. a, any creative person can do that. Okay. But to get a lighting right, you need to have a formal mm. training. Then only you know okay, mm. okay this is how it works. That's why the formal training, the works. career courses it are works. very important. Yeah. So you again self taught up ho sakte ho in all these See, other journals. See self taught you can and say I'm not saying you can't like even before getting into photography I used to do like I used yeah. to go with my hang out with my friends we used to go to different places in Bombay mm-hmm. we should try different technique which like we did light painting or if there's a traffic was there we should do like low shutter speed and see how the light trails work those things will be there but when you do a formal training you have a feedback from your like your guide mm. you have a critique ki how this could have been done mm. or what you can do to make the image stand out so in terms of product or in terms of your architecture also like they'll help you so mm. those things will miss if you do a, like a if you're self taught mm. like you can do like i'm not saying you can't do it but it will take some time yeah. to get so yeah. like say maybe like if a professional if you learn pro- professionally maybe like 
in a month or a year you know what needs to be done mm. but if you are self taught maybe like say two two and a half or three years you will take ha you are spending more time, more time. Mm. so because it will be more like a trial and error mm-hmm. see even see right nowadays people say you can learn photography online like there are tutorials there there are people talking about okay this is how you should shoot so replicating is a important part like even when we were studying we were told ki if you are liking an image you should make sure you try to re- replicate the same thing mm-hmm. so in by doing that you know how a product like a simple image you will look okay ha huh, this image is to get the lighting same it's a task so once you do that you know ki ha hmm. this is what is required hmm. some people want a career in photography so besides commercial photography what are the other uh, genres and or some other work they can pursue see once you into photography like if you are like 2 3 years experience in doing architecture or any kind of photography get into teaching okay that yeah that's a good that's, avenue yeah. yeah so even i used to teach like mm. now i don't like uh, there's a school in the sudan would have to where i teach uh, full time there like okay. and you can take workshops like yeah workshops are, nowadays uh, you know small do, yeah. workshops yeah. skill development is always welcomed yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah you can do workshops yeah, yeah, and all be, great uh, as we pointed out teaching so how important is a good portfolio for a photographer see portfolio is like you are like a bible for you like if you don't have a good portfolio you can't succeed mm. so like see when you are like in the starting if you are an amateur you have to start somewhere so what you can do is you can like either like collaborate with someone or do a pro bono like a free or like a shoot with someone where like some interior designer is coming up or like a startup is there you can like have a discussion with them and start shooting good work mm. like you can get into like one is that or you go to places visit places and then shoot public buildings mm. and then build up your portfolio yeah but if someone wants to do interior photography hmm. and so they will need to do these pro bono yeah. shoots and all yeah, so i think to. that's your pro investment bono. yeah that's, yeah, that's yeah. when uh, initial investment so if you visit any restaurant if you like that uh, how it's designed you can approach the owner and say can, like during the like off time you can say can i go and shoot it hmm. so if they allow you can do that so that's how i have done like hmm. so when when we were like finishing our course we were supposed to shoot 30 images of uh, interior architecture okay so for that i have been to ahmedabad we tried different locations we like approach different people to allow because in bombay if you see our bungalows don't have enough setback yeah so like they take Three meters का setback दिया and there's a building. So for photography, you need a a foreground building and then the background. Mm-hmm. Those things it's not possible in Bombay. So, so you I had to, to travel, travel uh, to different cities. Different city where there is a good amount of front yard. Mm. So you can keep stuff. You have leaves like either it can be a lawn or some landscaping is done. So you have a foreground, then your building is there, and then the background is there. Oh. So those things is required. So you have to travel, and then you have to travel to restaurants and see if the like a structure is good. Mm. So Uh, ask them whether you can shoot it, and you, if you tell them that this mainly for portfolio, and if you hand over the images, like if you take a print or send them a soft copy, they'll be more than happy to. Like, yeah, to give you that space yeah, and time. Yeah. So because see, nowadays even for them they need good images. Yeah. So if you can help them within their time frame, they'll be more than happy. Yeah. To. That's correct. how I done. Like I went to house of uh, M Mangalas Ni Haveli. It's in Ahmedabad. Okay. So they, I uh, we went there. We just took a chance. Ki, can I go and shoot? So they say, "Kisi, we have one hour time before we start." So we, they allowed, and we took took that image as well. Yeah. Oh, so apart from a good portfolio, good networking very yeah. important because how else would you go to these real estate groups yeah. or you know architects, interior designers? How do you network? I'm technically very bad at networking. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, like I started, like I started doing yeah. for my like. friends and colleagues who are from like from the same college and then slowly started building my portfolio put it on instagram and then uh, so social and, media is also quite important yeah, here nowadays because, it's really yeah. important to put up work which are good which you are convinced ki this is good of like see right right now there will be like if you google any uh, photography there will be like hundreds and different types of mm. people will be there to showcase their you should do what you feel like doing and even like what we used to do is like if suppose a client is there you're shooting for a client you like say you finish shooting what the client requests and then from that time you remove some more time to make your portfolio mm. so if you want in time in, the, in terms of that like whether you want to do a detailed shot or you want to shoot something which is like really abstract it's completely up to you and mm. then once you're done with that you can share it with the client whether they want to use that image they can take it or that that image goes to your portfolio Okay. So that's how you can start building one one like one is your basic so requirement. So your ha basic requirement. What the client yeah, wants. Yeah. You shot that and then you have time. So like ask them ki ha I need to shoot two more images is it possible? So they say yes then. 
shoot it mm. so in that so time you side have, by side you have to keep making your yes, portfolio yes, yes. Mm. so as you do pro bono even the architects they they like your work the next time they will call you mm. any one memorable or a very uh, you know proud project of yours so yeah there's one project uh, which i've done with people place project uh, okay. i think nisha nair is the main one and the, so with uh, with her like i've done a coffee table book for cst okay central railway so where they give me in like a month time to shoot the entire building in and out mm. so that was like a very different experience because it's a it's a public building but you can't go there with your tripod and shoot oh, it's not allowed it's not but allowed. because of your project because, yeah. you could so do they it. gave me permission to shoot entire building so there are places where even like publics are not allowed mm. uh, so we are doing one more book with nisha only mm. um, it's a people play uh, so people called uh, ladakh so we are doing similar concept where mm. we are documenting through photos and yes. writers are writing what's your favorite aspect of uh, doing photography doing your job generally i like to capture uh, capture and frame object so like i am not good with shooting people mm. i am like really bad with it but i somehow like shooting objects just still mm. so uh, if you say product or you say architecture interiors like those elements are still So I like to like com- compose and capture and like do some kind of an abstract through it. So while you were doing photography, uh, you know there are some moments where you feel uh, you know you, if you're not happy with a project, how how do you do? Like you wait for an entire day, pointing towards how your typical day would be like. So same thing. Like we actually have to do a reverse calculation. Mm. Like same if you're doing an interior space, first see whether which side of the like it's either east facing or west facing. and then accordingly to plan it mm. same even for an architect facing a bungalow shooting a bungalow mm. you have to plan well ahead, ahead. so if like we have a checklist for clients ki mm. if you are doing interiors these these products should be there mm-hmm. or if you are doing architecture exterior then a day prior the entire building need to be cleaned mm. so there should be even the flooring need to be watered so that you have like nice shimmer there so those mm. things a pre work we'll have to get it done okay and before the shoot also we get those things so done so these requirements uh, you as a company or a team doesn't have to do you have to we have generally we get those it. things done from the client side okay so clients okay. do it and then minimal like some minor changes our team does it all right. so people with like so they know ki what all things those mm. things they will be aligned if you imagine if you're shooting a a conference room or a, like a classroom where there are multiple chairs so we have to sit and match first like align all the tables mm. so everything is in one line then make sure the cha- chairs in one line and make sure that even the wheels are properly aligned and if you see oh my god the the like if you notice like sometimes the office chair wheels are not facing properly yeah. they are not parallel to the frame so we have to make sure all those things are done and then you should oh my god just so th- that level of detailing that eye of detail yeah. is very important yeah. when you do photography yeah. my god yeah. i never thought this would be yeah. uh, that difficult yeah. Yeah. advice that you would like to give uh, a pe- a person who wants to start a career in this field the so career is like if you want to start getting into photography first of all like you need to have a backup like a a job or something where mm. constant source of money is coming and then you whatever surplus money you're getting you're spending on buying equipments and buying stuff or spending it on photography you learning and then slowly and gradually you can shift completely into mm. so because photography is like a it will take time like it's not like instant you do this and then you get project yeah. if you are, you could get you are lucky but yeah. it takes time so for that if you have something which is constantly coming we give you a stable source stable of income, source income basically then like they can will be like happy say like photography like imagine you don't get projects every day mm. so it will be like a weekly project or like in months time so even if you're saying interior and architecture during monsoon there won't be any architectural exterior shoot because in bombay mm. you can't do mm. and during that time even the interior work is little slow down So you yeah. won't get work. Oh, so that is do, yeah, because there's damp weather yes. and the lighting so like is not there. So it will be cloudy. Oh, yeah. So you would you won't get good lighting. So so those things you have to be prepared. So that's why it's like mm. if you're starting, you should have a backup like a job or something like a day day job, and then slowly over weekends you can start doing shoots, and then that entire like start shooting shoots on weekends, and then slowly it can become like a once in a week, mm. twice in a week, and then. you can complete the switch into this is something which never even came to my mind that yeah you have to plan your yeah. year accordingly yeah, yeah. so that you can do so a shoot so like during yeah. like sometime before diwali 
major all sides are getting like hand like the finishing stages are there so the client will have to move in so those that time like during monsoon definitely is like is almost like zero like you you will get one or two odd projects mm. but again you will go there you'll set it up everything and start pouring then you can't you have to call it then a day you can't yeah either have to close the blind close the window then shoot it so nothing is seen outside or else you have to like call it a day and come tomorrow and next day do the same process again again have to set yeah. it up and then so i have just seen this is randomly you know people are uh, you know ironing the sheets ironing the bed yeah, fabrics yeah. the stylists do all these things like i've seen on sites so it it i'm sure it's a Task, it's a task. doing it's it a again task. and again so everything you will have to stage like if you see like if you see any good images there everything is styled style mm-hmm. means you have to stage it mm-hmm. so it should look good see even right now so the day to day the pillows which we use it will be completely different than what we use for shoot correct so it has to be puffed up it should be neat properly done we do whenever we travel abroad we make sure we identify few buildings Hmm. And we plan according to that. So, okay, so if I want to shoot this building, like if some sub particular building is there, we make sure we visit that place, we shoot, and then we come back. Hmm. So we went to US in twenty eighteen. So there's an Amati building which designed by I think Frank Gehry. So we wanted to shoot that. So we were in India and we didn't know what time is the right time. So we used like I used Google Map to see the location, and there's a street view is there. Correct. The street view, and you see the like orientation and then uske like related to that like we planned it okay this this time is the right time hmm. so accordingly we plan we went there and we shot oh wow so that's how i do it like if you want to like shoot any architectural monument or hmm. building or to shoot that's how we do it the entire discussion this is what i've noticed about you you know you, you are very keen on uh, detailing yeah, yeah. and you are good at research work yeah. i think that comes with a background of uh, architect your yeah. education that yeah. you have so like very I, research based uh, yeah. so i'm not know? a good reader like i don't like to read but i consume more of like a videos mm. like videos in terms of related to tech related to any te- technology hai science hai uh, invention i like to absorb those kind of videos which mm. helps me in doing stuff in Correct. my photography what's your uh, vision going to be like like where are we leading to in terms of photography because nowadays uh, digital magazines are preferred e catalogs hai hmm. so are we going to like shift to from print media to now it's completely shifted now yeah. like if you see print is like maybe like 10% people yeah. consume everything is on instagram Correct. so even like the orientation of your images has changed initially for yeah. magazine we used to do landscape correct now it's more of vertical so it fits in your instagram post mm-hmm. so while shooting like we ask client ki whether this image is going on instagram or it will be on your like website so accordingly we have to frame it also mm. so some images will be portrait some images will be landscape oriented so it it's like but nowadays it's more shifting towards your digital one so that's how the vision is going yeah, to be yeah. like a people are going to stick to their phones yes, tablets yes, yes. that's our orientation yeah. and that's where we so now does everyone feel that everyone has a nice iphone they can they can i can capture it they do but i don't so, think that's uh, see they yeah. see 90% they can capture it but again as i like emphasize more on lighting that is the one part which they can't do it's always good to invest in yes. a good photographer yes, yes, and yes. it's uh, always bad yeah yeah it's always yeah, that's that the, he'll bring value to yeah. your project which you 100%. have like been designing since yes. a while yeah see when while designing you have certain like a certain corner of or certain part of the design which you liked you'll try to capture that from your point of view mm. but if you have some photographer he have a different perspective to Correct. shoot it, to capture it there are different types of photographers in bombay or like you need to know ki what kind of photographers you are liking or mm. who will do a best job to your Correct. capturing your projects 